Hey everyone, it's Devin Francis, also known as Leonard Monster. And I got a cosplay on Devin. Oh, I just realized. Yeah, what is it? What is it? With you. My, my plaid and my Nirvana yeah, shirt I've, I've, and my ripped jeans. I was actually standing in front of the mirror, I was thinking like, what pants? And then I was just like, I should check. No pants. And then a moment later, I was like, wait, no pants. I was yeah. like, oh, I can't do that. No, I, I need to wear pants. I know who you are. I'm Donald Duck. <laughs> I have I have ripped jeans. He is not wearing ripped jeans, but I like to think oh, it is boots with the fur. Is. Boots with the fur. With, with the, the fur. fur. I it's apple bottom jeans. I don't have obviously. my guitar in Vancouver, but I could go grab my banjo if need be. Very, very much in the spirit of angsty teen Donald singing Rainbow Connection. Um, That'd be so good. I would cry. I know you would. I cry every time I hear that song. I know. Except for except for that one, the last time mm -hmm. I heard it, cause that was a Kermit body pretender. I uh, don't know what that was. A that, David Parker. That did not sound like Kermit. This is what like is David this, Victoria? Parker. This is my cosplay vlog. Uh huh. Um, it's episode one sixty four of the Oddcast. What are we talking about? We're talking about album 66, mm -hmm. episodes 3 and 4. I almost forgot how to count there because I almost said 2 and 3. But you it did. did. And that's all that matters. So BTV Trinity and something, something end, part 1. I can't remember what it's called. The Long End. Yeah, part one. Whatever that means. Part one, in which I figured out something sooner than Devin did. But yeah. we'll get to that. I'm proud of myself for that. Whenever I, I almost can... went back to try and figure out exactly what happened in that moment. And I was like, yeah, I'll just keep going, taking my notes. Um, I, I have like a story about okay. my experience um, with that bit. But first. Which involves me temporarily... Wondering if I went insane. Uh huh. First, BTV Trinity episode five hundred eight hundred fifty eight, uh, written by Sam Sixiri. What happens in BTV Trinity, Victoria? So Captain Quinn. We get is to now we get to see what main, what her face what's her face from Matrix a and main character, and I guess Jerry. we just have to accept that he's now a main character. Wait, is that actually Jerry's actress? No, no, because there's Trinity. Oh. Oh. Like the Matrix. Yeah. I didn't realize that was Jerry. It was... Or like Tomb Raider. You know what other movie she's in? Jerry's actress? No, I always forget her name. She's in Bye Bye Man. She gets super murdered in it. Okay, what happens in the episode? Um, so it's about the Trinity, um, the kind of oh what's it called submarine the no um the main story the narrative the, frame thank you the narrative framing device is that um connie is in a submarine with this french lady and captain quid for some reason um i I know you have lots of things to say on Captain Quid later, so we'll get to that later. Um, and the lady's trying to figure out, like, what the Trinity is, and says so Captain Quid, and Harlow stowed away or something <laughs> I guess. in there, I guess. Otherwise, I don't know how else to explain why he was he there. He just came up through, like, the floor holes that you have in submarines. Like Bugs Bunny, he just emerged from a hole. No, 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 room. like submarines, you know? You get out of a submarine through, like, the holes in the floor. They're in the top. Only when you're above water. They were underwater, but only like 10 feet. And so Harlow swam down and they came up the floor hole. I don't know. How do you think you get out of a submarine when it's underwater, Victoria? You go above water. No! There's a hole in the floor and you open what? it and you go out. And the water doesn't come in because air goes up and the hole's in the floor. That... Have you never seen anything with submarine in it before? Have you not watched Magic School Bus? No, I don't know what that is. Um, so, I completely, okay. 
So Harlow stowed away, or he made a weird entrance by breaking into the submarine. Maybe it's like last week's Mabim Bam, he just painted a bunch of himself on the walls mm -hmm. and no one realized he was in the room yeah. the whole time. They just thought it was the paintings on the walls. Um, so there's just like, um, there's one bit where, BTVs are always so hard to recap. There's this one bit where um, they're saying like what the Trinity isn't. There's another bit where they're listing verses which like show the Trinity in the Bible. Um, there's a storyline with like the French lady where her dad was a friend with Captain Quid, but he died or something. And um, he like wrote her a letter um, and she was like too scared to read it. And I zoned out when they read the letter and I didn't go back. Uh huh. I, so I only heard like the last I'm picking three up words. on the zoning out based on the fact that you keep saying her dad, like you don't know who her whole, like what that whole who he is. I mean, like what. he's. He's like a famous uh -huh. sea explorer. Okay, good. But I can't remember his name. Jacques Cousteau, except they said like Jacques Cusco in the episode. Because they wanted him to be more hip yes. with the millennials uh -huh. and Gen Z. Yeah. When he turns into a llama. Yes. Um. Well, he was supposed to be dead. He is. As far as you know, he is. <laughs> You know, That's what when he shows up back up as a llama and like, there's like, a llama, you're supposed to be dead. Um, you know, like seahorses? Yeah. And there's like sea llamas. <laughs> um, he shows up I, and he's pregnant with her sister. Because it's sea llama. Yeah, seahorses. Doesn't matter. You get pregnant. No, well, it oh, does no, matter. No, it doesn't matter. It's the guys, though. Yeah. Them guys. It's... If he, if he did have a kid when he was a sea llama, that would be like that, Is that Anthony how... Morph Mabim Bam bit, where it's like when, after becoming an animal. Is that how Wit got Empreg a couple albums ago? He became a sea llama? Yeah. I mean, I can't say you're wrong. Cause... Good, because I'm not. <laughs> Do you remember anything else that happens in this episode? Podcast. I'm trying to remember the other bits, but there's always so many. Um, I can't remember any other bits. They'll come up as we get through there. Okay. I assume there's more. Um, I I really liked the um, what the Trinity isn't bit mm -hmm. only because it almost gave me hope that we would get something reminiscent of stories by bernard because it opened up and it was just like now we have oh yeah there was also harlow exploring at one point yeah trying to figure out like stuff about the trinity that's um, this is not the only btv post bernard which has had a large amount of time dedicated to harlow investigating a mystery regarding the theme of the episode yeah Honestly, when they have stuff like this in, like, a kind of clippy show episode, it reminds me of New Year's Eve Live. Was that, was that the one? Mm -hmm. Yeah. So. To the moon! And then we didn't get... Otherwise, it's to the moon! I and still then, don't. No, I explained it to you. Okay. It's yeah, from, like, I, this did. I don't remember. black and white sitcom, mm -hmm. and whenever the main guy's wife annoyed him... He would say, like, you better stop or I'm gonna beat you to the moon. And ah, everyone laughed, cause... Ah, the physical abuse. Yeah. Um, so, as you mentioned earlier, Captain Quid. Where there, do we start? There are two, at least two, equally likely, equally entertaining possibilities they're all here. dehydrated because they're drinking salt water and they're hallucinating him that is the third possibility because one possibility is that they decided that they would impersonate a real living random guy that their friends met decades ago and just do an impression of him on their TV show you know and what? use his real name for it you know what what that's probably it because I was waiting for the submarine to sink and it didn't 
so it's probably I was like, not there's one possibility that this is Dale Jacobs, and they asked him That'd be so to good. pretty please oh my gosh. do an impersonation of this one guy that the Barclays met 25 years ago. I hope so. That they kind of semi-remember the story and what his voice sounds like, and they think, hey, this is a real living human random guy who's out there somewhere, but let's just impersonate him on TV and also use his real name. Yeah, things have done worse things with doing that. After, Clory said, uh, after Connie said that about Clorison's name, it's like, you know, this makes sense. Also, he's in Hawaii. He's not going to know. He's not in Hawaii anymore, maybe. I mean, unless he escaped. Yeah. He can. His boats keep singing. That's true. But I mean, I mean, hey, Eugene's version of him had set, kept on setting up business all over the calf. Yeah, but that was like an imaginary version. I know, version. but was it? I hope so. Well, I, I'm just saying the room of consequence with its like database could have like looked up where Captain Quid is these days and pulled details about the real Captain Quid. Another horrifying possibility is he actually um, walked out of the room of consequence and there's just two of him now. Okay, that's the fourth which, one. Like, there should never be that many Captain Quids yeah. and it's a danger to society and everyone's going to die. I mean, matter antimatter collision. Um. <laughs> If they, if like the two of them touch, the world will explode. Yeah, uh, the the second main possibility. I want that to be a thing. Is that this is nega Captain Quinn wandering around with like David Body yeah. Snatcher? Um, is that this is the real Captain Quid, which would mean that Eugene, having emerged from the Room of Consequences take on the Death Program, decided that what he needed to do with the time left that life has given him is hunt down the real Captain Quid and invite him to Odyssey to for whatever him. inexplicable reason. Him. The harpoon. Because, I mean, obviously they're not, regardless of whether this is real Captain Quid or not, they're not actually in a submarine in the Atlantic right now because this is a local variety TV show. I mean, it's probably a soundstage. Exactly. Where, like, they pulled out this really emotional Which is why Captain Quid didn't this, sing it. That this lady like, had, and she's like, how do you know that? And they're just like, we're holding in the, the shots script. now. And that wasn't in the script. That was all real. And uh, she was just like, this isn't in the script. And they were like, what are you going to do about it? We're you lying. know, You know she wasn't on a script because she seemed genuinely emotional, and she's like, Huh, what an interesting revelation about my parents. What about revealed. that part where she yells, cut to commercials, cut to uh -huh. commercials, and they're like, wait, no. Um, so yeah, this episode is about the Trinity. We had some good looks at like kind of both misconceptions and like ways that we don't think that we think about the Trinity, but we actually do because that's the way it's like burned into our mind. I like came Quid, out of this episode even more confused. <laughs> Quid at the beginning of the show. He summed up how I think most of us think about the Trinity, like, unconsciously, where he's like, there's Jesus, and the Father of the Son of God is God, and the Holy Spirit is in there somewhere, too. Honestly, yeah. When I was editing the last, or the Out to Sea review, I was like, my Captain Quid voice is actually really good. It is pretty good. Um, are, are you... Surprise! Get away from me! You monster! Surprise, it's me on BTV. You know, um... How everyone's wit and also Jay and stuff. Uh huh. I like to think that the only, like the only ones the who aren't, <laughs> the only ones who aren't, are Maury and his host of Aliens, mm -hmm. which includes David Body Snatcher and Nega Captain Quid and the real in, Captain Quid. In the distant but future, everyone else is wit when like because Jay, Jay is stuff. like the last pass through, right? Is that how it works, I, or is I he the first? I think he was the last one. So Jay's like the last one, and he's like talking to Wit, who's pretty up there, as we've said before. Yeah. And Wit's like, Jay, pass me on my knowledge from the future of the things I have yet to see. Is like Jack. Jack was right after Wit. He was, yeah. So like, exactly. he could yeah, be his yeah, yeah, yeah. best friend, and he um, remembered all the right things to say. Yeah. And he was like, share with me the, the wisdom of the the things that you've learned that I still haven't yet. Like, I f I understand most things because I've already been most people. But Captain Quid, I don't get what we were doing there. And she's like, I was never any Captain Quid. And then they both look into the camera and it cuts to black. And that's the end of Odyssey. I thought you were going to say what was going to stay, like, go on his knees and plead for Jay's wisdom. And Jay was going to be like, okay, close your eyes. He was going to close his eyes and he was going to feel like something slip onto his face. And then, like, 
um, Jay was gonna run in with a mirror and be like, open your eyes, and you're just gonna be wearing, like, all the sunglasses, and Jay was gonna start playing, like, his Elvis that would have nothing to playlist do with anything. on Spotify, and then Wit's like, why? And he's like, I'm imparting my wisdom, I've learned that Elvis is the most important, and then he moonwalks away. I so, feel like that's in character for Jay. D- yeah, but that has nothing to do with Quid. That's true, I wasn't trying to make it about Quid, though. Um, so, Now You Know is back which I'm glad, because it was a startling absence for whichever episode in which it was completely missing. Do you think that we're the only ones who heard Captain Quaid when we listened to this episode of Now to See? They're like, but Devin and Victoria, that episode's been deleted for 50 years. (laughs) Um... Yeah, Phil was just all over this episode. I was like, he's really getting his credits in because it was like four minutes in. I was like, I think he's already been like three people in this episode so far. I'm just worried that Captain Quaid is going to become the new Dr. Schnitzelbonker, which I feel like it kind of looks like it after. If he shows up (laughs) one more, if he shows up one more time ever again, then that will be true. He's... Captain Quinn scares me. He's like an eldritch horror in and of himself. But the scariest part is he looks human, but you know he's not on the inside. Captain Quinn's actually a really sweet guy. I don't know why we're, we're slandering the, his name. The comforting thing about having Now You Know back is the fact Wait, that... Wait, no, he's he's not nice. He's left people to die in his boats. Never mind. The comforting thing about having Now You Know back in the show is that it's still the same audio bite from I Want My BTV. Mm -hmm. And so while the other bits, even though they may have, like, the same idea, you know, they change what they are each time, there's no common, like... I mean, there's the sound effect of the static that transitions bits, but there's no, like, voice cues or anything like that, or music even that is consistent across every BTV episode. It's just this. And so the fact that they're still using the same voice that's like, and now it's time for... Did you know? Don't you forget it. Have you ever listened to a BTV episode with Gidgets in the room? No, I don't think so. She loses her mind. At that? At the static noise. And it's like every minute. And Mm -hmm. every time she hears it, she's just like... I meant did you know, which I've been saying now you know for some reason. Yeah, Um, I can't listen to BTV episodes. Um, It got to the point where, like, she... I didn't want her... You just put headphones in? Well, I didn't want to do that. (laughs) And so I... And she was, like, laying on my bed, and I didn't want her to leave, so I tried Mm -hmm. to, like, time and predict to, like, remember when the static was gonna happen, just turned down my volume all the way, but it was, like, uh... Like a CD player, so I like had to hold down the button. It was never fast enough. Well, you no, know, because it takes forever. That's a point five second sound cue. Because it takes um, forever to like turn it all the way down and turn it all the way up. I. When they're talking, they're like, "There's some things in the Bible that are explicit, like Song of Solomon, for example." <laughs> when um, they said explicit, I was just like, "Ooh." <laughs> And, and there are some things that are implicit. And then they said, like, like these, and then they're like, like, when you make things very clear, I was just like, oh, that's not what I thought they were going. You were so disappointed <laughs> at where you thought that was going. Um, I like the joke about Buck being like, did Haggai beget Zechariah or did Haggai beget Mephibosheth? And that was a good joke about, like, Bible is clear on some things like genealogies. Very straightforward. I was just like listening to that. Except not I, really. Sometimes it, when they did that pit, I was like, "You're so close to being explicit. You just have to go a little bit further." <laughs> um. Also, with that bit, the like the final thing that they said was about like giving to the widows and the poor, and I was like, "I'm not." saying that it's an intentional dig on a lot of people to point out that there are some things in the Bible which are explicitly clear and then put Jesus saying that your religion is completely and utterly worthless if you're not caring for the widows and the poor. But I'd like to think that that was a dig. Um, at dig at what? At the people who, like, try and make explicit things out of very implicit things while ignoring stuff that is explicit, like giving to the poor and caring for widows and... And like the actually explicit things that Jesus says. 
Um, yeah. So. Oh my gosh, pop pop shirt. We have to talk about yes. that. Yes, I was I, so glad that you sent the message about. Yeah, I sent so, Devin um, messages so, when I was listening to this, as I do, and one of them was just pop shirt. TM, so yeah, all caps. so Harlow is in this episode again prominently, and I like how Harlow's role on Adventures in Odyssey has been completely relegated to BTV now, um, and. We got a reprise of Harlow's most iconic joke and one, and of, one of our of, most quoted lines one of our favorite in the lines entirety of this show. <laughs> you can have a Pop-Tart TM at any time of the day. I was so happy. I was just like, I know that's not because of us, but like, I wanted to be because we say it so much and he's yeah. only ever said it once in the show. Yes. In a very forgettable half episode. <laughs> um, this is such a good line. Like... That's such a weird line to, like, call back to, uh -huh. though. I know. That's why I was like, and... there, was the, there was a part in my mind that was like, there was a 2% chance that this is because of you. <laughs> <laughs> because of us. Because um, we say it probably more than we ever should. Yeah, more than anyone else ever has. More than, far more than the thought that was ever given to, I think, John Beebe wrote that episode. I don't know. Is that on Chain Reaction? Yeah. Um, we, we say that line so much. And also, like, I have Pop-Tarts handy a lot, and, like... Because you're a yeah. Christmas tradition ruiner. Because I'm a life ruiner. Please, Devin. Um, <laughs> give you some credit. Um, so... Pop-Tarts are my... Like, my emergency meal if I have no other food left in my life. Finally, Jacqueline finally decides to read the letter from her father. And then, and she's like, oh, he was killed by a tiger shark. Um, and she's then, killed by a <laughs> llama fish. No, Jacqueline, I was the llama fish. I, lo I was the llama fish. Um, I love how she's like, he was killed by a tiger shark because I saw on the TV. Oh my gosh, I love his last so words. Hard his last words were, "Hey guys, let me see how close I can get to this tiger shark." I no, was like, it was, that. "Hey guys, take a picture of me with this tiger shark." I'm so like that. That. And I was sitting there. I was like, "Oh my gosh!" I'm sure that it's not dangerous. And I was, I was just like had my hands on my head and I was like, that was so dark and I was like dying laughing. It was it was so, was so absolutely funny. hilarious. That, that was that, so funny. The fact that so the news dark. would air that because it was very like, hold my beer or hey, watch this. It's like that, um, who, who made those videos like famous last words? Oh uh -huh. yeah, Studio C did yeah. some of those like famous last words before. Yeah, just no, you don't need to say before you die. That's a given. Yeah. But, um, yeah, it, it reminded me of The thing, videos. the specific thing it reminded me of is that, like, new screenshot with the headline, man stabbed in altercation or whatever, and the infographic after he says, last words before stabbing, what are you going to do, stab me? <laughs> <laughs> That's all I could picture there. I'll try and find the image. Put it up. Um, or, sorry, not a tiger shark, a jaguar shark. Uh, which I don't think is a real thing. Tiger sharks are a real I thing. I have my phone. No, I, I have my phone. We both have our phones. I would question tiger, how... Tiger shark? Jaguar shark. Tiger Jag. sharks are real. Jag. Jaguar. Jag. Jaguar. Gur. Jaguar. I said it very clearly. I look like a smash my keyboard. Jaguar shark. Look out, he's going for oh, the jaguar. It's a real thing. But um, it's scary. It's scary. I'm curious about how Jacques Cusco... Look. Yeah. Was killed. Look how tiny that submarine is. Best way will. No small parts, this picture says. <laughs> um, How did he get killed by the... Jaguar shark. I'm pretty sure the real. It's all the different components of a jaguar shark. It's teeth eating man, stomach hold treasure, and also dolphins. And jaguars there too. Um, 
How he was killed by a Jaguar shark? I'm pretty sure Cousteau like was basically always in submarines. I don't think he went like swimming out in the open water a lot. Jacques Cousteau. I mean, I don't know that is much about him. the man him. who found the Pink Panther diamond. Yes. Well, he was a very accomplished man. Um, is, is that is that Jacques Cousteau is yes. He's like the most famous oceanographer of all time. What? Oh, this isn't the OAC. I was going to say, like, what charity was he? <laughs> um, I was like, how did he get killed by a tiger shark? I'm pretty sure he was always in submarines, not swimming around. But I was like, if Captain Quid was captaining the vessel, the pieces fall into place. I wanted him to try and harpoon it. The fact that we have a submarine captained by Quid really makes me, like, pull in, like, Grim Grotto, kind of, like, Queequeg, Q name, submarine... I need to hear Nega Quid's evil laugh. Um. So. Oh my gosh, the the noir train sketch. I yeah. forgot about that. I that was actually my favorite part. It was really good. It I, was also really funny. It was like really smart uh -huh. and really funny. I really I liked, liked the it. point about how like if you say someone is the love of your life, like how could you not read their letters and recognize them and know what they've said is important and stuff like that. I was like, like when they said that, I was just like, man, I'm really glad I'm doing devotions with Devin in game now. Um, and I think this episode laid a good foundation for taking out of context, coming out on the AIOC later this year, for talking about, like, understanding scripture and stuff like that, and being like, here's how we do, like, exegesis and stuff like that. I mean, not quite and stuff. If you We're going to talk all about hermeneutics. about that now... Go listen to the rich wise guy. The rich wise guy. Have we reviewed or that the one? poor, the poor rich guy? The sorry, poor rich guy. I Have don't we, think so. How bad would it be if we reviewed that one with taken out of context? How much would we have to repeat ourselves? I think we'd be talking a lot about Grady and analyzing what's mob boss rich empire of capitalism. Oh no. I know. Um, and then the bonus track. Did you listen to the bonus track? I did. It okay, was more good. content. Woo! So it was an additional did you know about the Nicene Creed. Why would I skip the bonus track? I, don't, I thought maybe you missed it somehow. I don't know. No. I, um, I listened to this and the bonus track in my iTunes. And then I listened to the other one in the OAC. It's about the Nicene Creed. And as soon as they start brought up the Nicene Creed, I was like, please, 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 please bring up the fact that Santa Claus was on the Council of Nicaea. And that's what the whole thing was about. And I was so happy. I don't remember if I've talked about this before on the podcast, but I learned this in a sermon a number of years ago. St. Nicholas was straight up ganks. Not only did St. Nicholas, like, help write the Bible, quote unquote, because the council wrote the Creed of Nicaea, but they also assembled the first cut of the Bible as we know it today. Like, they decided which books to include in the Bible and which books to not. Wait, what? Yeah. Wait, which ones did they kick out? A bunch of them. Wait, how do you do what? How do you do that? You decide. Like, all of the ones that are in the Catholic Apocrypha are all ones that, like, they didn't include. But why did they get ignored? Because they felt that it wasn't, like spiritually relevant like there were ones that were like historically correct but they felt it wasn't like didn't have like it was just like a history text and didn't merit like the spiritual importance to be included in, but, in scripture i mean you can still read them or at least some of them because they had to weigh a bunch of choices and decided which books to include because before it was just a whole bunch of loose texts. They had like letters I mean, from Paul like and they had just a bunch of writings of different apostles. I mean, obviously the Old Testament was... Wait, like did they decide where the books like started and ended too? I don't think so. They just had like a bunch of letters and they had these gospels that were passed around and they had a whole bunch of things and then decide which of these are fake and which are real and which are important and which do we want to keep and what order do we want to put them in and stuff. Hmm. And they assembled the New Testament the as we know it today. About saint nicholas the more i love him because he was really cool yeah so yeah not only was saint nicholas on the council that assembled the bible as we know it today basic at least the first version of that but in the most interesting possible story about santa 
he didn't give coal to the council members with whom he disagreed, as they joked in this sketch. He fought over doctrine with one other bishop, and he got so self-righteous about it that he punched out the other bishop, and the council threw him in jail, and the legend goes that Jesus appeared to Nicholas in a vision, and he opened the jail cell for him because he was in the right, um, making him, as my pastor put, probably the only person in history to be divinely vindicated for punching a bishop in the face. Um, also, this... Was, was this, like, the church here? Or yeah, Florida? yeah. It was here. When was their British pastor? He was, like, the first pastor who oh, was here. I never would have met him. Yeah. Um... Also, this, did you know, I almost missed this, is a conversation between Eugene and Horace, who is his lab assistant in failing to the finish line, the one who kept on, like, dropping and breaking things. I told you I remember nothing about that episode. I know. I was like, there Horace, was... I was like, is this some from previous, like, did you know thing? Because I thought I recognized the voice when Horace was reading the did you know earlier. I thought it was just, like, a random kid. I was like, yeah, so did I. I was like, whose voice is this? And then Eugene called him Horace in this, and I was like... Wait a minute. I wouldn't have remembered. I wouldn't have put it together at all if we hadn't so, just done the album review and it was the and feeling to the finish line was fresh enough in my mind. Horace didn't make it to the outside of the OAC, or he did because this is bonus. So I'm gonna say he almost did. He like got to he the failed to the finish line. <laughs> Does, yeah, I was going to say he, like, he got to the chain link fence and he was shaking it when they, like, tased him from behind. But yours is much better. <laughs> In the gated community of chronological albums. Yeah, yours when, is much funny when punchline. When his third form tases yeah. him and just... Uh. Goo Girl tases him and carries him off back to the OAC. You belong with us here. You're not escaping. If I can't be in the normal album, neither can you. They chloroform him with the loose chloroform that was on the floor because he kept spilling and breaking solvents. Oh, that was a thing that happened, wasn't it? No. Oh. I don't think he ever spilled any chloroform in the episode. Is there chloroform in it, though? I don't think it was ever mentioned in the episode. That's just you me speaking from me. personal experience. Yeah, you've chloroformed yourself before. Numerous times. Um, That's just lab life, baby. No, you're supposed to check if your thing is on. Uh, if it's not, you die. Do you have any idea how much trouble I would have gotten or you die. in, like, any of my biology classes ever if I was in a room with, like, the the fan not on? Why, why were you using fume hoods in biology? I had to use them, like, in left classes, and I had to use them in my bio classes at Selkirk. For what? For... Like, just mixing up stuff and putting it in there. I don't think it was anything actually toxic. I think it was mostly just they needed a place to put it. Yeah. So but you wouldn't have gotten in trouble for having the fume hood the off. The fume hood still was on. It didn't need to be. It was on, though, and there was, like... there like, You wouldn't have gotten in trouble those for Those fumes, it. they need to get the fume hood on. And then we put them in there. And it was like, make sure the fume hood's on. And if you're the last one, it was like, make sure the fume hood's off. You. That, that lab lingo. Science last. <laughs> science last. It's me, science last in Goo Girl. It's like Shark Boy and Lava Girl, but mm -hmm. for a new generation. Mm -hmm. The effects are actually worse somehow. <laughs> you ruined my, my dream, dream blog. My dream blog. Because it's modern now. Uh, um, I'm, and you're like, you're listening to us and you're like, I'm the smartest one in the room. That means I know more than all of you. So, BT. So you're, you're the teacher, uh -huh. which means you have a big head. I'm George Lopez. Yeah. Uh, BTV Trinity. Still no, this one, I felt had an even looser format with regards to like a story by Bernard. Uh, yeah surrogate they, than the previous really ones one. which is strange i do think they're with every episode getting closer to it's what old weird TV with this one like. though like generally they have been and with this one there were some steps forward but i feel like there were also some steps back because of that, that. because the, one of the main things of btv is that even if it's you know before it was the story by bernard and i get it can't be that right now but 
it's that the entire episode is recurringly coming back to a story that is being like told in pieces throughout the episode, which is a story being told and not an actual thing going on with the host of the show. And I feel like that's what we've been moving towards more lately, because in this one, the thing that they keep coming back to is like Connie talking to Quid and uh, Jacqueline. I have it. I have an idea. Okay. Uh, also, I just want to say that when I heard uh, Eugene talk in this episode, when he first talked, it made me smile. I don't know why. I was just like, oh, I like, I like Will. Mm -hmm. Not that I don't like everyone else. It's just, I don't know why. I honestly don't know why. I just He's heard him sweetheart. and I was just like, oh, I like him. <laughs> um, so, I, what if they fill, like Kingdom Hearts 3 fill mm -hmm. Bernard? And it's just like, he's there. He's, he's smiling He's the executive the producer now. He's the executive producer now. If he was smiling, smiling in the background, it wouldn't be background. Bernard. That would be a body snatcher. I mean, I don't really think that was Phil either. Phil, he was sitting behind Meg on Pegasus for a prolonged amount of time and did not make a lewd comment. That was not Phil. I was just waiting for it to happen. I was, like, cringing already, and it just didn't happen. Maybe made me Meg cut his tongue out. <laughs> it did already happen, and then that's where we are now. It's a good theory. I'm going to roll with that. Um, I Part of me is, like, a little nervous about watching, like, Hercules again once I get to it. Because just, like... All the bits of Phil in Kingdom Hearts mm -hmm. when, and by all the bits, I mean when he talks to Aqua in Birth by Sleep. I'm just like, get out of this series, because <laughs> he, because like, okay, Victoria, I know, um, but whenever he sees someone, he's just like, I'm not training you and stuff. He sees Aqua, he's just like, you can get all the training you want. And when Hades sees Aqua, he just like, very like longingly looks at her entire body and he's just like hello little bluebird and he like looks her uh, down, and it's like very focused uh, there's a lot of pictures of it online and like the best part is phil's just like i can train you all you want and she's just like no thanks i need a trainer and she just walks past him uh, what a legend btv trinity had some good points it did like a good job at explaining obviously one of like among the most complicated of basic theological concepts and i admire that i think they did pretty good i think the thing that i like is that it didn't just do a good job at like trying to make the Trinity understandable as a concept, but it did it in a way that focused on creating a more general understanding of like how to understand scripture in general. Mm -hmm. Like it was a very like broad based foundational kind of approach that then narrowed in so that they could lay groundwork for kids understanding other stuff. And like I said, probably can like point forward then to when Taken Out of Context comes out later this year. Um, by far the most effective bit was the noir sketch mm -hmm. it was really really good honestly i'm sad they cut the nick saint nicholas bit from that the episode. actually i didn't really find it funny well i just thought it's interesting for kids to know okay that yeah that's true um i what was i gonna say um that noir bit to me felt like classic btv like i actually wish it was Part of me wishes it was a little bit longer, but another part wonders if that would like it was good. It was a, it out too much. It like was if a it, good sketch and it was well paced. If it were to be longer, it would need and it made an excellent point more content uh -huh. and stuff. But like it kind of reminded me of um, the bit with like Sam and Lucy and the parable. Like, or, Game show? No, the um. Who's got compassion? I think it was I want my BTV. Um, was what's the one where it has Lucy and she and Eugene 
and it's the the the, the, the Good Samaritan. Yeah, that is one of my BTP. That's right. Yeah, it kind of reminded me of that because that's also noir. Which is very similar to the recent Harlow BTV thing that they did, where I think was also Harlow investigating the Good Samaritan. Honestly, the Harlow bits kind of remind me... Wait a minute, that wasn't BTV. That was Kids Radio. Oh, okay. That was my other guess. Um, which, in which case, was it over the airwaves? I believe it was, yes. Um, the, the Harlow bits remind me a lot of... Wait, no, it was a big broadcast, wasn't it? Yeah. That sounds right. Just gonna keep on I can see I can see why you thought of it though, because it was the first like modern kids radio episode. And like, also it's like and, and no, so the first it's, BTV episode. I was gonna say it's near the first BTV, but it's not. It's really not. It's very no. far away. It's like You're just thinking because it's it's the first one is yeah. what confused you. And also like sometimes when I binge BTV I listen to some old kids mm -hmm. radio stuff too. Um I mean, it, to be fair, it is weird how this show has, like, episodes where it's just an episode of a radio show that exists in the universe, and then there's also separately episodes that are a TV show that exists in this universe, which are both variety shows that are usually themed around a single moral concept. Honestly, But BTV they're separate and different. And kids' radio are pretty similar. It's but weird that we have both that, things like, as different them things. The most was... Bernard. Yeah, Bernard and the fact that BTV has more specific bits. Yeah. Um, they got their goofs and their gags, their munch squads, and their, their haunted, haunted doll, doll watches. watches. Yeah. Their monthly observance. That's the next thing I was going to say, too. And their jingles. Their, their Totino's Pizza Hour. Um, uh, McElroy Family Fun Hour, presented by Totino's. I listened to that episode in its entirety today. It was excellent. You should listen to it if you have not. I, I've i listened to the Daymare, Watercolor Daymare Pile of Donors song so many times. You need to listen to the so McElroy good. Family Fun Hour, presented by Totino's. I do. Um, we need to wrap up this episode. Yes. I don't know what I want to give it. I'm going to give it a 4.2 out of 5. I'm going to give it a... Good theme and execution, but lacking on the mm -hmm. format and living up to what BTV is supposed to be. But glad that they brought back Did You Know at least. I'm going to give it a 3.5 out of 5. I think it was pretty good. I feel like it could have been a little bit better. And the quid thing is confusing. Yeah, I I just want like a longer storyline that's like a story story like when like yeah. i said before when the narrator came in and he was just like i'm gonna tell you a story it, mm -hmm. it like you actually like, got me here we go and really then it's like, really nope. jazzed nope. it nope. 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 it kind of felt like me the opening to the fairy tale mm -hmm. sketch or um the one about the girl and the weed mm -hmm. um, yeah and i was just like really excited and then it ended like 10 seconds later and I was like, please be long. Well, good news for you, Victoria. We get a new BTV episode in a week on the AIOC. Oh, wait, what is it again? Idolatry. Okay. Hope Remember, that's why I was like, wow, we have like two BTV episodes coming out yeah. like imminently. Honestly, I kind of, I kind of like it. I feel like. The more, it gives them more chances the more to get it right. Do, yeah, exactly. It's like also, Janet. If they just keep doing yeah. it, more iterations, they learn slowly. And... I, I just I like BTV, and I want it to be good. Yeah, and I do I too. Believe in it. <laughs> it's hard to review, though. I find. I feel like the best BTV they've done in a while. I wonder what your reaction is going to be to this one. Is the Count of Monte Cristo? I don't remember. They have like it super the well. superhero bit with Connie. Yeah. And there's like a super villain, superhero. And was it forgiveness? Thing. Was that the theme? Or revenge, it, BTV revenge, revenge, right? Revenge, yeah. yeah. And then it had like the Count of Monte Cristo. Oh yeah, that was what we pointed out was weird was that we've already had BTV forgiveness before. Yeah. Um. But this 
that they were like, we really want to do Count of Monte Cristo. And I was like, please don't. And they were like, sorry, we can't hear you. We brought Wellington back. And I'm like, well, I guess that's true. You bring back my fave. Wellington. But you another another thing Victoria book. loves that's also the name of a sandwich. Wait, is that true? Beef Wellington? Is no! that a sandwich or is it just a meal? No! Why do you take everything I love from me? I don't. I give it to you in edible form. I don't want this. To be fair, I was the one who didn't know that a Monte Cristo was a food thing, and you already did. Yeah, I think it was... Because Monte Cristo isn't a place, I don't think. Is it only Monte Carlo that's a place? Yeah. Because okay. I looked up, after I got into the Count of Monte Cristo... We should end this and talk I, about the long end. Yeah, I looked up if Monte Cristo was a real place uh -huh. and it was made up. So the sandwich, I'm assuming, is named after the book. So we're back from a lengthy away that will probably be mostly entirely cut. I started talking about the Count of Monte Cristo. And, and we then, all know where that leads. And then it actually led to me talking about this strange case of Dr. Jekyll and Mr. Hyde, and that led into a longer tension. Uh -huh. So, uh, episode 859, The Long End, part one, written by Paul McCusker. He came back, He's back. to finish the GRC. He's back to finish what he started. They're like, you made this mess. Now clean it up. Clean it up. And they threw a broom at him. Yeah. Um, I don't know about you, but every time I hear Wally Hegler's name, I just imagine him doing like a shoulder shimmy. It has been a while since we heard from Wally. Okay, talk, what it's, happened in the episode? I don't episode? know why. His what last happened name, episode? it just sounds like he would do a shoulder. Like, I imagine him just doing that at all times. While negotiating prices. Seducing hey. you <laughs> to pay more for an item. Well, I mean, you could pay... 12 bucks or for you that could hand pay hair, 14 14 <laughs> uh what happens in this episode um so in this episode buck gets a package with a bunch of things money boy um money boy gets a package with a bunch of stuff including a mirror and a painting and i think that's it that is it and um or is it um, and so Eugene and Katrina realized that this could have some clue into, like, figuring out more stuff about Buck's mom. Stacia Bartley! And so, let's see how many shoulder shimmies we can do in this one episode. Um, so the things came from that lady who talked to Buck a couple albums back who knew his mom. Uh-huh. And I don't know how many albums back that was. Probably not many. Was it even one album back? Was it last album? I can't remember. It was two albums ago, okay. right? Cause, yeah, because the so last album was like ended ago. with like Divided We Fall and stuff. So it would have been two albums ago, okay. I believe. Um, Divided We Fall, that's like such a dramatic title for what actually I know, we happened. were so scared. Well, yeah. <laughs> I mean, they almost lost Buck. So. Yeah, but it's... I thought, like, one of them was going to hate each other forever, uh -huh. so... I know, it did sound like... It sounded like we thought Buck was going to have a fight with him and leave and rejoin Mr. Skin. When I think Divided We Fall, I think the toys in, like, going towards the compactor in Toy Story 3 mm -hmm. about to be burned to death. Uh -huh. Um, and so... That lady died and all the stuff, I guess she had to send these things to Buck because it was like his mom's dying wish. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And so she sent him off to Buck mm -hmm. and then a bunch of other stuff she had was taken to Wally Hagler mm -hmm. who brought it to Jason at JJJ's and... Um, Triple J Antiques, never going to get used to that yeah. one. When he said it, I was just like, oh, he said it! Because you know how I uh -huh. am. Yeah. Um, and then we hear, oh my gosh, it's a knock at the door. And then, and then it's this, it's this guy. I thought it was Buck doing a voice. Um, it's this guy, and he's asking about the lady and the stuff that was in the house. Uh -huh. And then there's this guy inside, and he's just, he was doing a voice, and he was just like, uh, 
nah. Uh-huh. And then the guy was just like, okay, I guess I'm leaving. And then he goes into a car and he's with Mr. Skint. And they're just like... Mr. Skint. Mitch, Mr. Skint was Mitch, Mitch all along. Mitch Skint. And then they they go... Mitch, whatever your last name is. I had a moment like that, like, with a character last, like, this past week. And I can't remember It's like that it post was. online from, like, a decade ago. It was like, me. what's Obama's last name? Um, <laughs> and that always uh, makes me think of Mitch. Uh, so, um, darn it. <laughs> <laughs> I can't remember what I was saying. So then they decide that they have to go to Odyssey and try and find this stuff. And then it cuts to... But like right after that guy was talking to the other person at the door before he goes well, to, go to the auction house first. To him with Mr. Skint, you hear the guy inside the house for a second. He has a couple lines. And he's, he's just, like, just like Echo Bravo Tango. He's like on the phone or something. He's just like, Hey, we need to meet up. I need to tell you something. And I heard those like three words and my entire day was made. My entire week, maybe perhaps even my month. At, no, I was still playing Kingdom Hearts three at the beginning of this month. Mm. Almost my month. Um and I lost my mind and I almost threw my phone. I definitely screamed. I didn't because I didn't know I realized what was going on. Something that... I was too confused in the moment by what was happening to realize that it was Chad Riser. I immediately texted Devin and also sent him a Skype message. Fortunately, I already excitement. listened to the episode the day before. So, well... This is our sing-along yeah, episode, I, by the way. I, I should, should have told you in advance. It's good to know. Every episode's a sing-along episode with us. With me. Um, so, I I wouldn't have sent you messages if you had Well, no, no, I know that. I'm just clarifying for the audience that yeah. you're not an awful, spoiled yeah. person. No, no. These days, you usually listen to the episodes before me. Um... So it goes to let's just go back to like Hagler's, I guess. Um, the guy comes in and he's just like, "Oh, I want to look at this bat," and I yelled, "Oh no, <laughs> don't do that! This will end poorly." And Molly Hagler's like, "Okay, look at the bat," and he's like, "I will," and he starts smashing everything. I just wanted Jason to deck him so hard. I wanted like Jason to. Like I wanted him to swing the baseball bat at Jason, and Jason just like holds up his hand and just like catches it in his hand. It's like, and then he like. I thought the guy was him. like, um, Hagler's just like he go go to J and J and J's, um, and so the guy does. I can't remember his name. Um, did we get his name? We did twice. I do not remember it. Okay. We start with an L. Leakum Coker or something. So like it wasn't like an Oliver Twist reference. I really wanted him his name to be like. And all of our twist reference. Mm -hmm. but it His name is Charlie. Charlie Dickens. It's very subtle. Yeah. Um, so the the hooligan, 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 he stepped in gum on the way to JJ's. Mm -hmm. um, he brings the bat with Well, him. he's investigating where it went. He's a hula gum shoe. Uh, yeah. Get off the podcast. <laughs> he, he goes and he takes the bat to Jason's. And while he calls Jason, and he also calls the police, and, um, the... And Come like, to think of guy... it, he called Jason before he called the police, yeah. which is funny. But also I get, because it's like, he needed to make sure he got Jason time to prepare for mm -hmm. what was happening, so I, I get it. Also, Jason's Jason. Everyone knows he used to be an agent. Yeah. Yeah, Wally well, knows that. Okay, yeah, yeah. Um, so, uh, the guy goes in... And he has his bat, and he starts to, like, trying to be intimidating, and Jason is not having it. And I wanted Jason to fight him oh, well, so, so bad. bad. I wanted to punch him in the face because you ruined Hagler's. Um, you didn't. I actually wondered if Jay was going to be in this episode when we heard, like, Wally at the beginning. I was wondering if it was going to, like, parallel the opening kind of scenes we got with, like, Wally and Jay. Yeah, in well, it is interesting Raiders. how, like... It's like very much brought back a lot of specific characters from the Green Ring Conspiracy. Like, I like it though. because we brought back Skin. It was like, well, like we brought back Monty, but we even brought back people like 
Wally, who Spoilers, are basically... Spoilers! I haven't said Monty's name yet! Sorry. Brought back people who... I said Chad Reiser earlier. Yeah, but Because they think they were bringing back, people... like, John Mark from the Imagination Station. I mean, why not? That would have been such a surprise. That would have got me yelling. Also, people might not know, like, who all the actors are if they've only played a couple characters. I think they probably listen to the episode if they're listening to our review, I, I hope. I mean, maybe, maybe not. Whatever. We're right. still summarizing. Well, I summarized faster. Um, so Penny, um, looks at the painting that the Meltzner's got, and she, like, figures out all these things. And she's and like, it sucks. That was so good. She was just like, they're like, tell us about this painting. She's like, it's so ugly, and that lady in the painting's rude, because she's not looking at the This people. is the kind of painting and you'd was... only hang up if you really love the person who painted it. <laughs> and I was, I was just, like, dying laughing. I was thinking of that new Mabim, or, like, that old... The Bim Bam Bix, I've been listening mm -hmm. to old bits. And there's one where a person was just like, I painted a painting, um, like, that, or there was a painting that I made, and I really love it. Would it be narcissistic to hang it up in my house? And I was thinking of I that, I recall that when Penny was just, like, ragging on the painting. Um, so they figure out some stuff. They found, the episode ends with them finding the like birth certificate for buck oliver um if that is your real name that can't be his real name like i i mean the thing that buck tholomew okay but like mr skins is dead okay so yeah okay. I was gonna, okay. <laughs> wait 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 um i completely that, forgot about that house, but yes i did write that house down comes in and then he talks to Jason and then Monty's also there and he was just like Uncle Jason and Jason's like you better not broken my window <laughs> and that didn't, that <laughs> I know didn't how happen. you I know you would have happened. I was thinking like yes now they can have movie night. You know what I liked and also surprised me? What? Wit wasn't in this episode. He was not. And I was like I kind of like that, that they can carry, like, all these different characters and, like, mysteries and have everything intertwine, and Wit doesn't need to be there. I mean, he'll probably be there in the next I'm sure he will couple be. parts, but I liked that he wasn't there for this part. He'll show up at the end when everyone stands in a circle and, like, curb stomps Mr. Skin. Yeah, and he'll be like, wait, 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 <laughs> I want to also. <laughs> um... Yeah, so Mr. Skin is Buck's Okay, dad. let's go through it from the top. Okay. But do you agree? I agree. Oh, wait, let me let me also say, when I heard Monty's voice, because I, I realized it was him, um, it was kind of like that, like, Beyonce? I was like, Monty? <laughs> and I, like, yelled it with, like, the same cadence um, that I've never heard that person see that Neither clip, <laughs> but you just know by the way you watch their mouth move, you can hear uh -huh. like how they say it. Mm. Okay. Um, but I, I didn't rewind at all is the thing, and Devin didn't rewind either, which is why he didn't realize it was Monty. Um, but the thing is, they. I started wondering if like I hallucinated that there were two people in that scene talking to each other and I was just like wait and then like the guy went outside and then like he was talking to Mr. Skin I was like did I just get confused and it was just that guy talking to himself or something I was like was they sounded so and, similar and I was like so sad I was just like I was so excited for a couple minutes there but what if like Monty isn't actually there and that was just like a random guy who sounded like Monty or they just got his voice actor in or something like that and I was like that oh that'd be so sad and then I got like basically to the end of the episode uh -huh. and I was just like I'm crazy I'm crazy there's no Monty he would have gaslit like, yourself he would have appeared and I was just like he's not in this I was so wrong and then Monty came out I was like it is him like halfway through the episode I was like what's going on with that one line from earlier that hasn't like been followed up at all yet um so yeah so I I definitely um gaslit myself which yeah. I do pretty much whenever I see spoilers in anything especially for intentionally deaths. which I find hilarious that so, you do that yeah like when I think the biggest maybe I'm one just crazy is um when I saw that Shio died because I looked at the comments before oh are we talking video. about I'm talking about oh, like okay. specific things and I was just like no, that wouldn't happen. And then I watch it, and like literally, she's laying there, like dying in Roxas's arms. I'm like crying. I'm like, she's not actually gonna die, though. I mean, she's back, so 
Spoilers. That's right. <laughs> Spoilers. I mean, she's one of the 13 darknesses. Of course she's back. I, I, oh. And she's also one of somehow, the seven lights. Somehow she's back. Hello, plot twist. She was one of the 13 darknesses, though, and that was weird. Um, How is she back? Nobody knows. People think that Okay, we're not she talking was about this. snagged during Toy Story, but I don't really... The claw machine. Yeah. The claw. I didn't get grabbed by a claw at all. My my weapon is a claw that grabs things. That's it. And it's also a weapon that grabs hearts. If I so, accidentally used it so fact, <laughs> Wouldn't be the first time. I can't I can't disagree. Um so episode opens with Wally. I was just thinking about it like a few weeks ago, how long it has been since Wally has appeared, and how it feels like an indication of how much Jay's existence on the show has fallen by the wayside. I love Wally. Like I checked, and apart from being a voice in Pinocchio, he was in one episode of The Ties That Bind, and that's the last time since like he was in like a good neighbor. Yeah. And then I think apart from that, he hasn't shown like up a good since, neighbor. Wally since the is Green there. Ring Conspiracy. I like That's Wally it. Hitler a lot. He's only been in three episodes. No. 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 Yes. He's in a thanks taking Which is story. before Green Ring Conspiracy. Oh. Wait, was that his first episode? Yes. Oh. I know. For a second, I was like, wait a minute. That and I was like, nope, I'm 52. Yeah, but you still... He's still in that episode. Yeah, but I said since Green Ring Conspiracy. Yeah, but acknowledge the one episode he's in before. We did. He doesn't have much. Just give him this. So I was like, that's weird. I feel like he was in a lot more episodes than that. I thought he was in Square One, at least. He's Which was also no, in Album 52. No, he's just mentioned a okay. lot. And also... That is also before yeah. Green Ring Conspiracy. The thing is, like... He's mentioned yeah. more than he shows up because he's mentioned yeah. in almost every Square One episode yeah. and some non-Square uh -huh. One episodes. So we get the the lady's house. We got Hiram Meltzner, lady's house. And yeah, she was super Hiram Meltzner. They're like, she died two days ago. Yeah, I know. But she's been dead for the past 50 I think, years. I think we even <laughs> talked about how Hiram Meltzner she was like back before before she actually died yeah because we're like because she was. well because eugene was giving this speech to buck that was very similar to like wit speech and stuff i wanted him to where it's like hey buck i've been here before where you're like i yeah, might have found like, a long lost I key wanted... in the next town over to like my past and family that i thought was you dead know and maybe i isn't. wanted in this episode is i wanted eugene to be like i've been there I wanted him to mention Leonard by name. Mm -hmm. And you were I want like, it to happen ever. You were going ever really at. crazy about the episode. And I, I legitimately thought maybe he mentioned Leonard because of how hyped you were about the mm, episode. Interesting. I like when my excitement over things gives you weird expectations. It gives me expectations about characters appearing that haven't appeared in a long time. So, we get... You know, which I just two. Shouldn't, I shouldn't have, except for this time. Yeah, like no one expects the Monty Inquisition. This is yeah. this was great. So we have these two Appalachian accents talking at each other. Honestly, the guy who came to the house, I thought a hundred percent was Buck putting on a voice for some reason. Maybe because he thought whoever was at her house, Mrs. Larson's house, like would know who Buck was and like wouldn't want to tell him stuff because they're still trying to keep secrets from Buck. So he's he trying to pretend like to be someone else. And which is funny then because you realize that Skint just has an extremely specific type when it comes to like manipulating ragamuffins. I only have one type of ragamuffin who I know how to I manipulate. Mean, like, the others are too good I can't wait me. until he meets Buck and then he's like, Skint, what the heck? And Skint's like, I swear, you're not a rebound, but you were absolutely a rebound for Buck. I, you know what my theory is? Because my, he is, 100%. He is. You know and that's why he sounds the same. Controversial, Felicia, that's yet me. true theory is about Mr. Skint. He's Buck's dad. Is, he's like, I can't remember his name. Fagin? Um, is it I? Or Ego. Ego. He's like Ego, where he just goes around and he has all these kids Ego and then in... in Guardians 2. Oh, yeah. And then he'll just snatch him when need uh -huh. be, and he'll get him to help with his evil plans. And so, yeah. I That's could... not bad. That's not a bad comparison. Thank you. Um, I think that, or 
know. Wait, I can't figure out how old this new guy is, though. He sounds Apparently, he's older. an adult. He sounds like an adult. They said he was so... an adult. Monty did, I yeah, think. Yeah, his, his first couple lines, I was like, it's a baby. But then, like, his, after he got into the car, I was like, oh, no, he was just doing a voice. Like, he's a, he's a full-on yeah, yeah. adult. Okay, so... We have the two people talking to each other. But Mr. They sound almost, is also very, very old. Yes. So he's they sound, still his dad. They sound almost the same. And I thought the one who was at the door was Buck. And I'm like, okay, he's trying to figure out where the rest of her stuff went so he can figure it out and all this stuff. And then he walks away from the door. And then I hear a voice. And here's the thing. Because their voices sound so similar, I didn't know if... Because I thought it was Buck still at this point. And then suddenly we hear a normal voice, normal voice, be like, blah, 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 spy stuff. It was so-and-so. And I was like, wait, was that the person in the house or was that the person who walked away? So, Oh, I, I had, like, no idea what was going on at all. Yeah. They sounded so way that's... too similar when they were talking at first. Yeah. And then I just heard the one guy talk. So I was and... trying too hard to figure out, like... I was like, I don't know what just happened, but that's Monty. <laughs> I was trying too hard to figure out what was going on to listen to the voice, and that's why I didn't realize that it was mm -hmm. Monty, because I was so confused at what was happening so fast, and I'm like, ugh, I'm not going to go back. And later on, I was just like, I, I kind of know what's happening, but I don't think that was Monty. So, so Monty talks about how, like, the house got all torn up and the floorboards got all removed. It's like that one short story you like, read in English. It was like, we knew it. Like, there's some serious cash hidden in this house, maybe... In the Hope Chest, probably, because you know, the miracle thing about the Hope Chest going from Wally and Jason. It's like, it's like that bit from The Office. No way in, no way out. Where they're gonna, one time they're gonna interrogate Buck and they're just like, have you ever illegally transported money? And he's like, no. And they're just like, oh really? And they find out he just has like a big bag of money inside of him. Mm-hmm. It's but it's like a cartoon bag of money uh -huh. where it's just like a sack mm -hmm. with a big dollar sign. They just thought that Buck was pregnant. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. So. I mean, if it's everyone, what's pregnant? We oh, pregnant. we also brought back the musical stings from the Green Ring Conspiracy, and they had some new twists on them too, which I like. It was exciting. Is Buck pregnant? I almost watched that video today. I even like pulled it up and everything. So Penny is using her art skills. It was so great. Which I feel like Penny's so role in this episode is yet another like intentional kind of thematic reprise from the GRC. But I love her getting to like yes. actually do her skills. And yes. there's like that one that one scene because mm -hmm. I listened to this the day after uh -huh. we recorded I think it was either the last episode or the episode before that and we were talking about how we want more buck and katrina interactions mm -hmm. and there was that one scene that was like two and a half minutes long where it was just buck and katrina talking to each other and i was like this isn't exactly what i've been i meant like familial bonding but this works too so penny and it was funny because i was thinking about the scene i was thinking about what we were talking about like the girls night where they're solving a crime with their different yeah, skills yeah, yeah, yeah. penny is doing her art the, interpretations the girls night, but buck is there too uh -huh. honestly like it'd be so good because penny can do like her art stuff connie can, I feel like it would just be very emotionally healing Connie for Connie can Buck. be a distraction. Because, honestly, that might sound like a huge insult, and it kind of Connie is could be the bit. getaway driver. No, We're going to Ocean's wait, 8. Wait, wait, wait. No, we are. We are. Okay, Penny is the one who comes up with all the fakes. Yeah, and, she's like, the forger. Them, and she forges them. Katrina's, kind of Penny, or Katrina Connie's also good at forging. Katrina is the brains. Connie's the muscle. Think back when Connie do or beat diet? up. No, when Connie beat up all of the men who in the FBI who kidnapped Mitch. Oh yeah, she me won swing that with the tire fight. iron. Said she, Robert Mitchell. She won that fight. So yeah, uh -huh. she's taken on like five FBI agents and come out literally swinging. <laughs> so yeah, she's the muscle. I think it was like um, two, but yeah. Whatever. Um, who who else can we get? We can't get Maud. Maud Yes! Oh my gosh. Maud She's she's Maud the, is, the head the head shrink. Maud food poisons everyone. And she also plays mind games with them. Well yeah, while choking um, them with her chicken doodles. Maureen's not allowed because Renee. Because she's this is her profession. Yeah. Um, we can't have someone who's actually in the FBI. Renee is the um, rogue. 
because because you never like, see her coming. Yeah, because you never see her coming, and sometimes it's like she's not even there. Yeah. <laughs> um, who who else? Who else? Wrote Agnes. Agnes Riley. <laughs> Agnes makes you feel bad and is disappointed in you. And that's what gets all of them in the end after Connie beats Jana? Jana. Oh, Jillian. We forgot Jill- Jillian. She was, Jillian. In her, she was in her concept in the last episode. Yeah. Jillian is the wild card. Oh, Which and should never be more we, sure need, we need a safe else. cracker. Who other than Monica Stone back in the game? <laughs> yes. I think we have eight now, probably. I, th- wait, I think we wait, have our Ocean's Eight. Wait, okay, so... I'm so happy with her, guys. We have Connie, we have Penny, we have Katrina, yeah, we, have we have Jillian, we have Monica, we have Maude, we have Agnes. We have Renee. We have Renee. So it's eight. We have Jana, so we can cut someone. No, we we'll probably Jana's, have to cut Maude. We're cutting Jana. No, <laughs> we're cutting Jana. Okay. Um, because I didn't figure out what she does yet. She's a banker. That's, that's our Ocean's I eight. feel like that would be useful. Oh, that would be useful. Hmm. She could work with Penny in the forgeries. And Connie also has okay, skill in art forgery. We're gonna cut Agnes. Yeah, that makes sense. Um, because she's dead. Yes. Um, a I valid mean, reason. She can haunt them. That is- <laughs> this is gonna be the best heist Oceans. movie ever. Wait, this is the sequel to Ocean's 8. It's Ocean's, Ocean's nine. 9. But the thing is, everyone who watches it, they're like, I don't know who any of these people are. <laughs> this is so good. We have to Ocean's write this nine. and make a video. Just, we have to make an episode that's just Ocean's 9. Uh, yeah, I'd be yeah, I want. I really oh, want to do that now. Wait, no, write down who TM, they TM, are. TM, 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 TM. Write down who they are <laughs> before we forget. This is, we're filming. I know, but like, what if it, the footage gets lost? Someone tries to corrupt our footage, so we can't. Hollywood. Hollywood. George Clooney's coming for us. George that's Clooney Ocean's, and Leo That's Ocean's 14 DiCaprio is them come. heisting our footage. Oh my gosh! That'd be amazing! <laughs> okay, okay, back to... <laughs> we can't go back. We just have to keep talking about this I now. I can't move forward. I can't move This episode forward. is dead to me now. Okay. So, um, <laughs> Penny, it, it's, it was fun to get to see Penny use her particular skills for, like, investigations and stuff. We don't get to see it very often, I just, so. I liked the ways that she was able to figure out, and I liked how casually she was like, Agnes oh yeah, there's this. I, I like how she was like, oh yeah, this is here, and that's there, and they were like, oh, we didn't see that. Like, I like how we get to see Penny as being, like, really competent in this academic sense in a way that we don't normally get to see her. Um, <clears throat> so, uh, too large, you know, is like busting up the shop at Wally's and stuff. And he's like, I'm going to go see this Jason Whitaker. And I was like, oh boy, I cannot wait to see what this young upstart with like, a pincher for vandalism ends up when he comes up against Jason Whitaker. I really hope Jason like, is not too out of let's shape. See, let's see what you do when I go see Jason Whitaker. I was just like, boy, I hope you do. <laughs> <laughs> I'm so excited for, I was disappointed that he just I, like... I was I was never so disappointed that he just walked out. And mm-hmm. I was like, Jason didn't even detain I know. I was like, he absolutely could have detained him. him. I mean, it could have been like the fact that he was like focusing on He probably Monty. wanted him to lead him back to it skin. Was, it's because he knew, because Monty there, and stuff. Yeah. He could have been worried about like Monty being in, because I'm guessing like Monty just came in, right? He doesn't want to play his hand, I guess. He went, do you think like Monty came in? He was like wearing a disguise. He was just like, "Oh, hello. Have you seen any chests around here?" And Jason's just like, "Yeah, let me show you around." And then and then he lets us go on for like twenty minutes just to make Monty feel good. <laughs> it's just so sad because let's be honest, that's what everyone's role when it comes to Monty is. Oh, I think you're saying when it comes to Jason. Oh no. Um, and then, um, Jason's like, you know, they're one of them angels in disguise. And then he's I'm just on like, to you, angel. <laughs> and Monty's like, what is going on? <laughs> he throws him off. He's like, time for me to throw you into the lake. And Monty's like, Uncle Jason, I think you need, and he's like, wait, Monty, Beyonce. <laughs> I was so excited. I was like, that was Monty at Felicia's house. It's funny because Jason is like, you can come out, Agent Whitaker. And I was like, is he talking to himself? Oh my gosh. 
I was so <laughs> dense about it. He, he said that. I was like, like, I was like, but your agent is he talking to Wit? <laughs> so I'm just imagining, imagining I you imagining. Completely forgot so he exists. What, what's happening in my mind's eye is the guy leaves the room, and Jason looks into this old antique mirror right by the cash register, and he says, "You can come out now." Agent would occur and then he's like Jekyll and Hyde and stuff and all of a sudden he just goes like he flips his collar up <laughs> like that and then he just Naruto runs after, he puts, after the guy who's just he puts in on, the building he reaches, and he tackles it he, re, he re, goes over to the antique coat rack puts on a fedora listen to me he's like Perry the platypus <laughs> And he just chases down the guy and he tackles him. I forgot to turn and... down the gain before this episode. I'm sure this is all so blown out on the mic. <sighs> and Monty's still in the back and he he thought he almost walked he's out. He he's thought like... Jason was talking to him there for a moment. And then he sees Jason. He's like, Jason sprints out and he's just like, I guess I'm not needed here. And then he just, he isn't. And then he just goes back to Des Moines. That's the last time he was ever in Odyssey, yeah. ever. Like the series, not even the Yeah, town. yeah, yeah. Um, I'm surprised that Jason didn't tell Monty to reach out to Buck for help on this. Because I know that Monty's going to, like, want to go it alone and stuff. But I would have expected Jason, in the way he was telling Monty to, like, don't get lost in the case and stuff like that. Stay grounded. I figured he would have, like, Jason, with his more aged wisdom, would have suggested that Buck would have unique insight into this mystery. I thought he would offer to work on it with Monty. I mean, he kind of is. Yeah, but like... Monty, hide in my closet. So. Monty, you go on my shoulders and I wrap us in this really long double XXXXXL mm -hmm. trench coat, but only big this way because uh -huh. I can't remember what horizontal and vertical is. Uh -huh. um, and then we're just going to go sneak around and then they start and they instantly get caught on a doorway. I liked... <clears throat> The foreshadowing about how there was like a smudge in the mirror and it turned out it was because that the birth certificate was like in the backing of the mirror. When they were like, They were oh, like, wait, the mirror, because we... they noticed the smudge in the painting and they're like, wait, this mirror has a smudge in real life. And wait a minute, peel off the black backing. It's Buck's birth certificate. They What's his peel real off name? The backing. They find the birth certificate. They peel off Buck's face. <laughs> he has. He's been wearing an M Mission Impossible. It's mask like ex machina the whole time. pull off. Like with the skin. Yeah, yeah. The yeah. Skin. They pull off Buck's skin flaps, uh -huh. and he's been a robot underneath the whole time with just a bunch of coins. So and like. Little did Skid Mr. know, he goes like this, Ex Machina style, and coins come out of Buck's mouth. No, his it mouth. It was tickets, because it was an arcade yeah, joke. Yeah, no, but no, but it's, it's... I know, because rather, of Money Boy, yeah. Yeah, Money Boy. And it turns out that Poe Dameron is who Mr. Skid was the whole time. Um, oh, I'm just imagining you watching... Um, the beginning of The Last Jedi now, mm -hmm. like, again, after watching Ex Machina, and then Poe just mocking Hux relentlessly over the intercom, and then you being like, just leave him alone, haven't you done enough already? Honestly. Ugh. Um, so, I doubt Buck's birth certificate is the papers that they're looking for. It could be, but it's highly doubtful. So there's still more papers. How many papers are there? Or... If it is, if Buck's birth certificates are the papers they want, is there intrinsic financial value to Buck's identity? Well, they, they said, like, that golden sheet in the mirror. It's made of real gold. What? It, uh, it was a golden paper. It wasn't gold. Never mind. It was brown. I wanted it. That's what they want you to think. You dust it off like the genie's lamp, uh -huh. and it's, like, gold. Uh-huh, and then Robin Williams comes out of Buck's birth certificate. Um, hey, but, but it's unfortunately it's Will Smith and they're like go back in go back in <laughs> put him back put him put back him, put him back put him back I'm still curious you and, know like, maybe I don't want to be a prince maybe I can just let Jafar rule I'm, after all. I'm curious yeah we're all, we're all fine with Jafar yeah rolling. Jafar is very good looking um, I'm curious and I'm glad that you're on the same page as me about what? the relationship between Buck's mom and Dolly Tender and Mr. Skint. Oh, because yeah, yeah, as far yeah. as I can see it, best guess Dolly is Tender is his mom. Mr. Skint was with Dolly Tender, which was a nickname for Buck's mom. Yeah. And they had Buck. And then Mr. Skint came to take Buck when she died. But, um, like, uh, 
she never t she just told him that like his father died because she like hated Mr. Skin. He left and stuff, and it yeah. was very like Star Wars kind of thing. It was like, oh, your father, he's dead, and he died this ignoble death. Is like how Buck describes it in the Green Room Conspiracy, and then, right? And then he wasn't a hero. One, he, my father wasn't like that and stuff. That one and Mr. guy Skin's was like, like Mr. S he was like Mr. Skin. We have to go back to Odyssey, and Mr. Skin's like, oh, I hate sand. I don't want to go back. <laughs> Um, it also reminded me of like the mysterious stranger where it's like, he calls me his uncle because I adopted him. But in reality, I'm his real uncle. And that's what it's like. It's like, you just think of me like your father, but in reality, I'm your father. <laughs> that's like such a good plot twist though. It's just like, wait, you're not my uncle. Who are you? I'm your uncle. <laughs> yeah. Oh, what? He's my <laughs> uncle. My favorite anime. <laughs> You're my uncle. Thank you for raising me. Thank you for raising me. <laughs> um, so Monty's back. Monty is back. And I'm happy. Honestly, I feel like we should have seen this coming, that Mr. Skin is Buck's father. I really hope that it, this isn't going to be those, one of those red herring things just, where we call it too early and it turns out that's not actually what it is. It turns out Buck's father is Buck. Or it's this new guy. Or it's Eugene. Ooh. I mean, literally, last episode we talked about how Buck's father was Leonard. So <laughs> I thought you were say last episode we talked about how it's biologically impossible for Eugene to be his father, and I was gonna say ignore that. No, not quite impossible. Eugene probably there's probably just enough of an age gap that Eugene, like technically speaking, could have sired Buck. Um, like they stole his DNA while he was sleeping. No, like, Buck I mean, a test to Eugene probably would have the, hit puberty uh, by the time Buck was born. I mean, you don't know that. I don't. I don't know what age Eugene hit puberty. Some Is say they still, he still hasn't. That's why, that's why they can't have a kid. Oh, <laughs> poor Eugene. Um, Eugene just listens to coming of age over and over. He's so jealous of Jimmy Barkley. <laughs> Honestly, Evan, has there been a joke yet about Eugene giving Buck the talk? Because if there, there has absolutely been, not been. I'm still. I'm waiting I'm waiting for, for when it. when we find out that Buck has to give Eugene it. the talk. <laughs> I'm you know I'm for right. You know Katrina I'm right. Katrina to give Buck the, the talk. So that he the has to give Eugene the talk <laughs> because she couldn't bring herself to do it. She couldn't shatter Eugene's world like that. To mend a repair. He's like, Katrina, I'm sorry. And she's like, I am too. <laughs> Eugene's like, I don't understand why we can't have children. Katrina's like, Ugh. it's like it's like that picture of the guy smoking and looking on the on the balcony. You mean Ben Affleck. <laughs> oh, that's who it is? Beyonce. So many good jokes in this episode. Oh my goodness. Is it makeup <laughs> for all of my um, Count of Monte Cristo yes. and Jekyll and Hyde? Yeah, stuff? especially since I cut all of that probably yeah. anyways. Yeah. Uh, <laughs> yeah. Yeah, Mr. Skin is Buck's father. I'm going to be really sad. I don't know why Buck's we didn't see coming. Buck's going to be so sad when he finds out. He's well, be I mean, really it's sad. like, yeah, I can see how this is going to be a huge, like, turning point of characterization. Because he's trying to figure out his family, and it's going to oh. really tear him up to find out that Skint is his father. Dang, you know what? We should have made a bingo predictions for, for this three-parter. That would have been interesting, but we but we didn't. I mean, we still could. Uh, no, because I feel like it would. there would have been a lot of, like, this yeah. character's going to appear, has already appeared, and plot twists that we've already gotten. Um... I think Buck's gonna become a Christian. I also like how they're like, Dolly Tender, that's a real name, probably. I mean, that probably is a real name. It's like someone probably I mean, that name. probably, but if you saw that name on a painting, I would assume that that was like a pen, a paintbrush name, before I assumed that it it's was... It's still called a pen name. A nom de plume de pentier, before <laughs> yeah, I assumed that... It. <laughs> yeah. My painting feather. Um, before I assumed that it was a, this is, this is a real name. Dolly Parton once sang a song called The Tender Lie. Mm hmm. And show stuff about. Um, Dolly Tender Furniture Set Keystone Doll Bed. It was a set of furniture, it was a doll. 
Oh, baby, I love you so much. I'm going to name you after a furniture line. Oh, baby, a tender. Um, <clears throat> this episode was so good. I'm so excited for the rest of it. And that's why we're recording this episode. And that's why I convinced Victoria uh, to record it now. Uh, profiles on Facebook from people named Dolly Tender. Uh, we have one person and they wrote their real name in parentheses. Yep. So it's a lie. Yeah. Dolly Tender. Honestly, I figured you would find some real people with that name, Dolly but apparently you didn't. Never let me go. Yeah. So, okay, that is all for this episode, right? Do you have anything else you want to say? The main takeaways for this episode for me is everything about Money Boy was right, but I feel like that was kind of weird. That was kind of obvious at this point. Yeah. But also, I'm just waiting for them to I'm say like, that he has the money inside of him. One, Mo like Gavin. <laughs> one, Monty. Monty. Um, I... And two, Skint is Buck's father. Yeah. And also like he, he rebounded, might... he rebounded with an identical Buck. But like adult 10 buck. years older. <laughs> adult Buck. I, I went to a parallel so One with slightly less neuroplasticity to abandon him. I, I kidnapped another money. I have another. a new son. I have a new with son. With who can drive. Oh, wait, Buck can already drive. Yeah. Darn it. I have a new son. Who won't leave me for the next blonde he sees to be your kid? Uh huh. And then, and then the new guy does too. He sees Eugene and Katrina. He's just like, oh, can they adopt me too? Can I get in on this, <laughs> please? And Katrina's just like, <laughs> and then a big group hug. Oh, oh, the dog is there. They were kids, Aww. and Eugene's just like, this is how getting kids works, right? You may be the same age as Eugene. We don't know. <laughs> I mean, he might be older than Mr. Skin, for all we know. It's like, it's like Charles trying to adopt Nikolaj's brother. <laughs> that is exactly <laughs> what it is like. You are completely correct. Oh, the new episode was good. Charles, this is like a 50-year-old homeless man. He's no, 40. He's clearly 45, Charles. He's eight. He has white hair and a beard. He has jack disease. He's bald. And he needs a home. <laughs> yeah, okay. Um, maybe start out small and then work your way up. But not that high. <laughs> okay. Next time. Exciting conclusion. The Long End. Parts 2 and 3. And All right, But when we only have part 3 left, it'll be called The Short End. Do you think there's an actual meaning to this title, or is it just some kind of, like, vague thing? Is that a phrase? I've never heard it before. I mean, I could look it up. Every like, time I think every, of it, I think it like of, like... Is it, like, the long play? Is that kind of what They're cutting is? two boards of wood. Uh -huh. But they're just like, oh, this one's too long for the fence. It's, or, like, it's, what, pass here's what's gonna happen. Long. We're going to have a dramatic, like, Indiana Jones National Treasure type scene where they're in some sort of yeah. trap. And Buck is holding one end of the papers and Mr. Skin's holding the other and it's oh, going it to rip. Rips in half. And it's like, which end are they going to get? And Mr. Skin's like, I'll take the long end because apparently it's like a wishbone too or whatever. Oh, you know what but it is? But it turns is? out the long end you is just a is? bunch of blank paper. They, they do like draw sticks. Uh-huh. And like, and it's... They draw straws for Buck's inheritance. And yeah, for Buck. And so like, Eugene and Katrina both get one. And then new money boy who has no Honestly, money. Honestly, it adds a lot Mr. to Skint. trying to... Like before, we're and just like, oh, he just wants Buck for his money and stuff. Which is kind of still true. But it adds a lot to that idea if we think that like, Skint is Buck's father. And the validity of like, the inheritance. And why he wants it and Long stuff. End. It's not just like a Count Olaf thing. It's like... He is his dad, and clearly the inheritance is supposed to go to Buck and not Skint because, like, Stacia hated Skint, and that's why she told Buck that he was dead. And that's why she wrote him out of her will. Uh, long end, a yield cur curve more than seven years. I feel like that's not the right thing. Oh, it could be. Like a yield it curve says, in terms of investment? It says it has to do with law, so... Which could be, it could have... Look... It's talking about shares and investments, but also law, so it could have to do with, like, inheritance and and stuff. Money boy. Yeah. Do you think they're going to try and take Buck away? Do you think Buck's going to get kidnapped? I thought you were going to say killed. No. <laughs> I'm like, no, chill out, Victoria. Do you think Buck's going to become... Slow your roll, angst train. A Christian by the end of this three-parter. No.
but like how the Chris's wrap up was in part one. I still think like, we need more. They need to draw fuck, out more. Fuck needs. Well, I thought, but like Grady was gonna get drawn out more, but then like the two parter with his like the highest stakes happened with his dad. I feel that was added. Buck's storyline is like a bigger thing than Grady in terms of like overall relation to like the main characters of the show. Yeah, I know, but all the main characters who are like the most important to him are in this, except for Jules. But Jules doesn't need to be in this. Honestly, I like the idea that Buck becomes a Christian. What if earlier than Jules, Jules comes and in and saves Buck? No. And Skin's like, "Who are you?" And she's like, "I'm his girl space friend." And then puts his skin. Just... I I like the idea that Buck becomes Jillian saves a the Christian day. Before Jules, which I always figured, I, yeah, I always imagined that he would happen. first. It would but be like, interesting if can you it imagine did, if it parallels Eugene and Katrina and their relationship, though. Interesting thoughts. I thought I say Eugene and Connie because yeah. it's like Buck and Jules. No, well, Eugene and Connie are not in a relationship. No, no, I mean they are their wards. I that's yeah, but I was talking about like romance. Yeah, yeah, I got you. I thought you meant, like, them as, like, the new generation. Nah. The Gen Z, uh, Meltzner, Kendall friendship. Nah. So, next time, Long End Part 2, Long End Part 3, uh, Trial by Fire review. It's all coming to you soon-ish, hopefully, question mark. Until then, thank you for joining us on our side of the YouTube. I've been Devin Francis, also known as Leonard Meltzner. Meltzner. And you've been watching episode one hundred. I just got my voice back. Episode one hundred and six. Well, thank you for give donating it to a good cause. I was just I was able to sing again today after like two months. Episode one hundred and sixty four of the Adventures of Nazi. Yeah.